stipulations of which we would like to press you on in the course of this session today. One, you call for the separation of the Negro into a separate state, either in this United States or made possible by the United States. Two, you say that war between the whites and the blacks is inevitable. Yes. Uh, I'm very glad to answer these questions, Mr. Cup, uh, to you and to the world. Uh, they are most essential that uh, we should give the world the answer to such questions. I have been uh, preaching and teaching uh, the answers to these questions for many years. I give thanks first, Mr. Cups, to God, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad around 34 years ago now to me. And uh, all that I have and been teaching, it is from him. And uh, it is very easy for us to recognize uh, the visit of this mighty one according to the time. If we have the knowledge of the time that we are living in, we can accept and respect this mighty visitor in this part of the world uh, to fulfill that which was written of him, that he will come. And now he has come and he has given out his purpose and his aims, as it also is written in the Bible and Quran. And therefore, I have nothing of myself in this answer. It is all from him. From him, you mean the messenger of, uh, of Allah? No, not the messenger of Allah. I'm the messenger of Allah. I mean from Allah himself, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Who preceded you as the head of the Muslims? Well, he was actually the beginner, yes, sir. And uh, I'm taught by him. This uh, separation uh, we uh, begin uh, with, it is absolutely ne necessary. We have uh, lived for here in America for the last 400 years and have served our slave masters well before these past 100 years. And now the time has arrived that uh, we want something for ourselves. The natural spirit of God is moving in us and making us to think in such terms towards self. And uh, the doing for self is now getting into the very life uh, of the black man in America. We want to go for self. We want to be ourselves. This is aroused in us by God himself. And uh, to oppose it means nothing but death to either side. If we oppose it, it's death for us. If others oppose it, it's death to them. But even your own people oppose it, Mr. Muhammad, if I may interject a thought here. Uh, most of the civil rights leaders with whom I know you disagree, Dr. Martin Luther King and Whitney Young and Roy Wilkins and James Foreman and James Farmer and any number of others, all believe in integration, getting along with the whites and moving into the same society. This is all due to their lack of knowledge of the time and what should be done in such time. They don't know that this is their time that they should be separated or they should go for themselves. This is what I'm trying to teach them. Teach them that this is the time that they should go for themselves. But is it not, would you disagree that it is the ambition and the goal of most Negroes in this country to become Americans in every meaning of that word, to participate in our no. society, to it, be responsible, legitimate, honest citizens? Isn't that the goal of the overwhelming number of Negroes in this country? Uh, it may be uh, their goal, Mr. Cup, because that they don't even know, as I just said, 
uh, that this is the time that they should be going for sale. And uh, lack of knowledge of the time, the lack of knowledge of self. The American so-called Negro, especially the leading class, do not actually know themselves. Excuse my voice as I'm a little look like uh, trying to be a little hoarse this morning, but however, uh, I may clear it up later. <clears throat> America's uh, so-called Negro, as you know, have been kept in the dark of the truth of self and kind for now 400 years, and the only one to break forth this truth, it is God himself, as it is written. And the uh, Bible, Ezekiel, and prophesied by Jesus, that uh, the dead must rise, mentally dead. So our so-called leadership is as dumb as those they are leading to this knowledge. Therefore, they hope that they could have a place somewhere in the life of the white man of America and in his country and government. They seek that place. Not that they seek some portion of the country, earth here, they seek only recognition of the white man as being uh, a citizen of America and uh, being his equal. And this is the wrong thing to be seeking. Since we now have uh, served our prophetic term of slavery here in America, and uh, now we have a taste of education of our slave masters uh, and their children, we don't go now to uh, the colleges and universities of the white man looking for degrees to uh, go back to him then for a job to work, live with him, or some uh, bread in the bread line. Well, what is wrong with that ambition, Mr. Muhammad? It, it seems uh, to be working out in growing numbers. It him a, a subject, a servant all the time. He's not getting an equal place with his master by seeking a job. The only thing that he should seek now, since he admit that he's free, and he is free. He's not no more a servitor slave. But he, the he's free. The growing number of Negroes who have achieved prominence in all the fields of this country, economic, the social life, the arts, indicates that there is tremendous progress being made, and the growing middle class of the Negro is tremendous today with a tremendous yes, purchasing sir, power. Yes, Mr. Cup, but the, the progress is only being made to uh, uh, the position or status uh, of a more permanent servant and not a servant that is equal with his master in uh, owning uh, such thing as a uh, place on this earth that he can call his own like his master. Then you say that people like the Dr. Ralph Bunches and any number of other Negroes who have achieved fame and fortune are still servants in this community? His fame and fortune is not his. That's the white man. He have a fame and fortune for the white man, not for his black man. All that the prominent, uh, I would say, uh, politicians, teachers, and uh, clergy, all has worked forward to the help of the white man to achieve fame for him and his race, but not for themselves and their race. Let me take you to another area, Mr. Muhammad. Our government is spending millions of dollars in various programs mostly aimed at uplifting the Negro for better education, better job opportunity, a better share of this society. Now, isn't that a worthy commentary on the white man's role? If the slave master gets rich and richer, he can do better by his servant, his slave. But the slave is now, as I say, stands at the crossroad. He can go for himself. And why not uh, the master teach him how to go for himself and provide him with the necessary means to go for himself and not, say, keep petting him around his uh, door? 
Let's assume, whistles or a better suit of clothes. Let's assume, Mr. Muhammad, that your separation policy comes into effect. You will ask the United States to give you a state large enough to take care of all the Negroes in this land. That would be about one-fifth of the territory. Well, it's about 22 or more million yes. of us. And then you would ask the United States for 25 or 30 years, according to your book, The Message to the Black Man, no, to help operate this for 25, 25 or 30 years. Yes, not 30. 25. 20 or 25. And also to give you a land that's fertile and rich in minerals so that the Negro can Make thrive from the earth. Yes, sir. A justifiable living. Yes, sir. How would you bring an economic system? How would you get the people to start a new state? How would we get them to start? I'm asking you to for the start. You want the government to start the state for you, to build all the buildings and give you the educational you system, are, and give you the business. We believe that you are obligated to start for uh, uh, start us off in such state, according to your own uh, civilization, or set up for your own civilization. The means that you have to set your own uh, race up as an independent race here today, not what you had for uh, 500 years ago, but what you have today. Let me pause for just a moment, yes, Mr. Sir. Muhammad. Thank we you. still have to interrupt for commercials on this Thank program. You. We'll pause for a moment and be right back with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad.